Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. I put a lot of videos out on how to maintain or repair your motorcycles, and in many of the videos, you need a multimeter to do the work. And yet, a lot of people are intimidated by multimeters. So I put out this video today to try to make the newbies more comfortable with using one and understanding uh, what they're used for. There's two functions in particular I'm going to focus on, and there are much more advanced features that we're not going to get into in this video. I just want to give you a basis from which to work so you can get more comfortable with the idea of using a multimeter. Now I'm out here at a hose bib to illustrate a point, right? When we turn the water on in our house, there's a certain water pressure associated with it. Well, one very important concept when we're talking about electricity is voltage. And voltage can be considered an electrical pressure if you want to think of it that way. So voltage measured in volts is very similar to water pressure. Now if I connect that hose bib to this hose here and I turn it on, I'm going to get a rate of flow with that water. Well, in electrical terms, the rate of flow is known as current and it's measured in amps. Now to take this one step further, if I take this hose and I pinch it off right here, I'm going to reduce the rate of flow and that's called a resistance in electrical terms and resistance in electrical terms is measured in ohms. Now as far as working on motorcycles, probably the two most important things to be able to measure are the voltage and the resistance. We'll talk about some other things as well, but those are the two most common applications for a multimeter. Now it's beyond the video that we're making here, but there is something I'll just mention, which is Ohm's Law. You can look that up if you like. There is a fixed relationship between voltage, resistance, and current, and it can be used uh, very cleverly to your advantage when you get into more advanced things. For this video, we're not going to really get into that, but it's something you might look up in the future. Now here's the battery for my R1200RT, and it puts out about 12.8 volts typically when it's fully charged. We call that a 12 volt system even though it's not exactly 12 volts. And there's one thing I need you to understand about voltage. When we're talking about motorcycles, cars, and trucks, they are this 12 volt direct current DC system, meaning that it's a constant voltage. By contrast, the household voltage when you plug something into your house, that is alternating current. And it's a different type of voltage where there is a cycle in the United States every 60 seconds where the voltage goes back and forth between the power station and your house. That's kind of oversimplifying it. And it's at 120 volts. So I mention this because when we're measuring voltage on a bike, a car, or a truck, we need to set our meter to a direct current scale. All right, enough background. Let's get into how to use these meters. Now, every meter is going to have a set of leads. Typically, there's a red and a black lead, which helps you code which side you're plugging into. And you need to plug these leads in somewhere. You'll notice that most meters have at least three, sometimes four different plugs here. And how do you know where to plug anything in? Well, for basic operation, it's actually not too difficult to figure out. The black lead will always be plugged into the COM or the common terminal. There is at least one more usually on a meter, but that's for different types of work that you're not going to probably get into, at least until you get into more advanced operation. So just plug the black lead into the COM or the common terminal. The red lead will be plugged into this terminal here, which is almost always put on the right, but not always, but generally on the right. And you see there's some symbols here. There's an ohm symbol, which is the first one. There's a voltage symbol. Uh, there's a milliamp uh, temperature. So this lead is used for various different measurements, but the red lead is going to get plugged into that side. And you can see it's even color coded on this particular meter. Now on this meter, there's a COM port or a COM terminal. And again, that red uh, terminal that I talked about, and it says voltage, ohms, and some other symbols here, which we don't need to really get into at the moment. There's some other terminals here that we're not going to need for the basic operation that we're talking about. On this meter, same thing. There's a COM terminal and one for voltage and, and uh, resistance and other things. Here's a very basic analog meter. And again, you have a COM port and one for voltage and resistance. So it's pretty simple to figure out which port you need to plug your leads into. All right, once we have our leads connected here, how would we measure voltage? That's probably one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do. Well, we just need to find the scale for voltage. And remember, there's direct current and alternating current we talked about. So 
I'm going to turn this knob right here to the voltage section. See there's a little V right here, and that's very typical. There's a little symbol next to that V. It has a straight line and kind of a wavy line there. And those refer to alternating current on the bottom, and the straight line would be direct current at the top. Remember, we want direct current. So there's a different scale here. We can start with 2, 20, 200, or 600 on this meter, and even lower if we want. And up here, you'll see there's an AC-DC button. So when that button is up, according to this little picture right here, that's measuring DC. And when it's down, it's AC. So I'll leave that up for DC. And where would we set this scale? Well, we're measuring a 12-volt system. We know that. Now, it's a little more than 12 volts, actually. So when it's charging, it'll be in the 14-volt range. When it's just measuring the battery, if it's just sitting, it's going to be probably between 12 and 13 volts. So if we put this on the 20-volt scale, that would be fine to measure what we want to do. Now, remember, we have two different leads here. And when we press these to the battery terminals, remember DC has a positive and a negative terminal, right? So typically red is associated with positive and black is associated with negative on vehicles. However, this meter is smart enough so that if you reverse those leads accidentally, nothing's going to happen. It will put a little minus sign in front of the reading, and that way you'll be okay. Now on this meter, it's a little bit different. There's an actual setting for DC voltage and a setting for AC voltage. So if I set this to DC voltage, on this meter, the scale will automatically adjust for you. So you don't need to set the scale. On this meter, we have a voltage setting like that. And when I turn that on, again, there's no scale, but there is a button for range. And you can change that if you need to. And remember, we need to check if it's AC or DC voltage. Here, there's a little wavy line, so I know right now it's set at AC voltage. And I would hit this button to change it to direct voltage. Now, on this very simple analog meter, I will set the little dial to the voltage section. And here, I do need to pick the scale that I want. So this wavy little line here is AC voltage. If I go all the way around, there's DC voltage. And so if I set it to the 50 range, that would be enough for the work that we're trying to do. Now, some meters like this one are so smart that you don't even need to select what, what, what you're measuring. It's going to be smart enough to know. So if I connect the leads to a battery, it's going to be smart enough to know that you're trying to measure voltage and it will select that for you. All right, now if I take this meter over to a battery and I have my two leads right here, I have my setting at 20 volts and I'm on the DC volt range. Now let's just put this red positive lead on the positive side of the battery and the black negative lead on the negative side and let's see what our reading is we get 12.63 volts, which is about right. Maybe it's a little bit undercharged. Now, if I switch these leads and I put the positive on the negative and the negative on the positive, nothing will happen. But if we look at that reading now, I get the same 12.63 reading, but there's a negative sign in front of it. And that just tells me that I have the leads reversed. So really, functionally, it doesn't make a difference in this case. I still get the same voltage reading. I just have to remember which lead is on what. Now, I've done a lot of videos where measuring voltage is an important part of the maintenance or repair. There are a lot of sensors which have a reference voltage. In other words, a particular voltage that they need to start with, and they reference that voltage back to the ECU. Of course, when we're working with a battery, we need to measure both the battery charge and the charging system, whether that's working. Uh, there are all sorts of ways that you will use a voltage measurement. Now, let me just mention one thing quickly and kind of get it out of the way, because we're not going to spend a lot of time on, it, on this video, and that is measuring the rate of flow. Remember, we looked at that hose, and rate of flow in electrical terms is measured in amps or amperage. This particular meter that you're looking at is one that can measure amps, and the way it's done is there's a clamp here you put that around the wire, and it uses uh, an electromagnetic measurement to infer what the amperage is going through that cable, or the rate of flow going through that cable. This is not something we do very often, and there is a way to put a meter indirectly 
uh, one of these other style meters indirectly in a circuit and measure the rate of flow, but only very uh, small rates of flow. I have a video in which I measure parasitic draw, and you could see an example of it there. But this is not something, it's more advanced, it's not something we're going to get into too much in this video. Now what I want to talk about next is resistance. Remember when I pinched that hose, that offered some resistance to the rate of flow. Well resistance in electrical terms is measured in ohms, and there are different areas of the scale here that we might choose. But you notice when I set this to the ohm scale, which I've done here, the meter comes up with a 1 on the scale. And that means infinite resistance. In other words, uh, there is no connectivity whatsoever. Now if I take these two leads that I have here, and I touch them together, watch that meter, it's going to go to 0. And what that means is that there is no resistance at all. Now, in truth, there is some, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, it's 0. So if I remove that, it goes to 1. If I touch them together, it goes to 0. Now, this measurement, just this very basic measurement like this, is also known as continuity. So if you want to know if something is connected on one end or another, you could take these two leads, touch them on one end of a wire, say, and the other end of a wire, and if you get one, you know there's a break in that wire. If you get zero, you know that there's no break in that wire, and that there is connectivity or continuity between the two sides. Now I'm going to sneak in a little extra thing here. There is another little tiny scale here which is known as continuity. If I take this away from the ohm scale and put it on that, all this is going to do, again, you see the one, and if I touch these together, you'll see the zero. So it's the exact same measurement, but I'm going to hope you can hear that there's a little beep coming from this meter. And sometimes you just can't look at the meter because you're trying to do something. And if you're just trying to measure continuity, you can use this scale instead of the ohm scale, and it will beep at you if there is continuity. Now, not all meters have that, although most of them do. But it doesn't matter. If it doesn't have that, just put it on the ohm scale, and you can measure continuity the way that we originally showed. But what about measurements between 0 and 1? Those will all show up, and you can choose your scale here depending on what you're trying to measure. And basically, we're measuring the size of the pinch in the hose, if you want to think of it that way. Now, there are various reasons why you would have resistance. Every device in a circuit, like a light bulb is a device in a circuit, and a light bulb will have a certain resistance. Sometimes you have electronic circuits, and they actually have something called a resistor in them. Here's a resistor that we could actually measure if we wish. If I put a lead on one side of that resistor, that little thing right there is the resistor, and I'll put it on the other side, we're going to get 0.02. I'll change the scale here. Now I get 0.032, and that's about what this is supposed to measure. So we can measure an actual resistor, and there's another reason why we might measure resistance, which is that there's a problem. So if you have a connection that has corrosion, or it's a poor connection, or maybe a wire is partially broken, well that presents a resistance as well, and we could measure it using this meter. Now on this style meter, again there's that little ohm symbol right here, so I can turn this dial to that ohm symbol, and again this one is auto ranging, so you don't need to pick the scale, it will pick it for you. On this meter, the ohm scale is also combined with the continuity, and so I could turn it to this, and I'll get the best of both worlds there. You see that little ohm symbol up here come up. On this old analog meter, there's two ohm scales that I can turn to. And again, on this newer meter here, it's auto-ranging and it's a smart meter, so there's a little ohm symbol right here. And if I try to measure resistance, it will be smart enough to pick that uh, range rather than you having to pick it for it. Now, is there an advantage with an analog meter over a digital meter? Well, generally speaking, the digital meter is going to be easier to use. A lot of them are auto-ranging, and it's just simpler to read when you're trying to read something quickly. However, there are cases where an analog meter is superior. I did a video on how to diagnose a throttle position sensor, and in that video you can see that an analog meter 
is a superior way because you can actually see the needle move, whereas when numbers are moving back and forth, it's more difficult uh, to understand what's going on. Some digital meters like this one try to emulate an analog meter by having this little scale right here which will move. However, that's not the easiest thing to see and I still think an analog meter in some situations is superior. So we've been talking about voltage and resistance or ohms, but there are other uses for these meters that you might get into as you get more advanced. Now a lot of them have this little area right here for battery measurement, which I think is kind of silly because it's just measuring voltage, but there's a 1.5 5, 9 volt and 12 volt scale. If it's there, you could use it if you like. Some meters like this one can measure a duty cycle or dwell, and there's other automotive functions because this is a meter designed for automotive work. Uh, many of them have a temperature sensor, so you put a special lead right here, you plug it in, uh, and there's other types of leads, and you can measure, in this case, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And there are some basic features of meters that you might think about having, depending on which one you buy, the hold function can be very nice to have. What that means is you're trying to take a measurement and it's kind of bouncing around, you can't quite see what the number is. Remember, digital meters are giving you a digital readout and sometimes that's just difficult to see. Well, you can press that hold button and that will hold the reading at that moment that you press the button so that if it's bouncing around, you can see the number and read it. Many of them also have a minimum and maximum uh, reading so that if there's a, a area where that reading is bouncing around and again you'd like to know what the high and the low is uh, this minimum maximum button will allow you to do that having a backlight may seem silly but it's really very useful because very often you're using these in a dark uh, area where it's just hard to see the numbers and having that backlight can be useful of course if you're using a newer style meter like this, it's pretty bright and you can read it no matter what the light is. So that's a basic rundown on how to use these meters when you're just getting started. I really think every workshop, every garage should have at least one multimeter uh, because you really can't do much in the way of diagnosing even simple problems without having some understanding of the measurements that we've been talking about.